Congressman, just what went into this decision, was this a long time thing coming that you thought maybe it was time to go, or was this more of a spur of the moment and opportunity presented itself? Well, you know, I, I was not intending to leave. I just ran and was reelected, and um, I was contacted by the search firm leading the search for the presidency of the Ron Foundation and began a series of discussions. And, you know, during those conversations, it became clear to me that the Rhode Island Foundation is a place where, you know, they are working on kind of three principal issues, making sure Rhode Islanders have access to high quality, affordable health care, making sure that we create real economic opportunities for all Rhode Islanders, and making sure that we're doing all we can to improve the quality of public education to give young people a chance. And I thought, those are all the things I have worked on for 30 years as an elected official. But this was an opportunity to kind of build upon that work and 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 be in a position to not only bring the Rhode Island Foundation to the next level, but to build upon the work that I've done for 30 years and to take all that knowledge and all those relationships and leverage them to the benefit of Rhode Island. And so, you know, I ran for public office in my first time and for every office I've ever run for, for one reason, to do everything I could to make life better for Rhode Islanders. And I think in this new position, I can do that um, with great confidence that I'm going to be able to really make a difference. And when I compare that to kind of the next few years in the House under Republican leadership, where I don't think a lot will get done, unfortunately, I saw this as an opportunity where I could make the most difference for the state that I love. And so I was persuaded. Uh, they voted this morning to formally offer me this position, and I accepted. You just mentioned it. You, you're just into a new term. You're less than two months into a new term. Uh, the voters voted for you three and a half months ago. What do you say to the voters who just elected to this office and now you're going to leave you know, a yeah. few months into the term? Yeah. So first I say thank you for giving me the great honor of representing you for the last 12 years. Uh, it has been the greatest honor of my life. I have loved every part of this job. I hope people will remember me for having been a member of Congress who delivered real results for them and got things done to make life better for them. And they will remember the incredible staff that I have, particularly here in Rhode Island, that um, have solved problems for thousands of Rhode Islanders. And I get letters almost every day thanking me for one of my staff members' great work. Uh, and I hope they'll understand that I'm going to a place where I can make an even greater impact on their lives. Uh, the Rhode Island Foundation is one of the country's oldest and largest community foundations, uh, making investments in all the things that matter in the life of Rhode Island. It's involved in every important issue from education to healthcare to economic development. Um, it's a place where lots of convening happens to come up with good plans, to develop housing, to respond to challenges in other areas of, of our state. So it's a tremendously important organization that's going to make a real difference. And, you know, they'll have an opportunity to elect a new member of Congress who I know will continue the great tradition we have in Rhode Island uh, of having a, a federal delegation that really punches above its weight. It's been great to work with Sheldon and, and Jack and, of course, Jim and now Seth. Um, and I know whoever are the voters of the first district elect will be part of a great federal delegation. And um, I'm going to have the opportunity to continue to work with people at the local level, at the state level, and at a, in the federal delegation in my new position. And I think it's going to make the work of the Rhode Island Foundation even more meaningful. We're going to be able to take this great community foundation to the next level, and I'm really excited about that. Was it a consideration, though, or did it weigh on your mind, like, hey, I just got elected, maybe it's not the best time, or in this oh, kind of work, is there never really a good yeah, time? Yeah, I mean, look, you, you, you always, if you had the choice, it would they, the, the position of the president and CEO of the Rhode Foundation would happen at the end of a congressional term. Unfortunately, that's not how life works, and when an opportunity presents itself where you know you can make such a difference, I think you have a responsibility to seize it, and I think people would expect that uh, of me. And, um, you know, that's why we have provisions for, for elections when these kinds of circumstances happen. I'll stay through June 1st. Uh, and the good news is my office will remain open both here in Rhode Island and in Washington under the House rules. Uh, the office remains operational so constituents can still get all the services they need. It becomes the office of the uh, residents of the 1st Congressional District, not the office of Congressman Cicilline but it remains in place until uh, my successor is elected and sworn in. So hopefully there'll be no interruption in services to the residents of the first district. Uh, as a congressman, you make $174,000. As the head of the Rhode Island Foundation, you're gonna make $650,000. Was that a consideration, the financial 
uh, aspect of this, you're going to make more than a half million dollars yeah. more. I mean, I've been lucky. I've always done work I've loved. Uh, you know, I made a lot of money when I was a lawyer, and then I got into elective office for 30 years, and um, you know, my salary has always been public, so it's not news to anybody. None of those decisions were ever motivated by financial considerations. You know, for me, it's really important I have a job I love and that I have confidence that I'm making a difference in people's lives, and that's what gets me excited about the Ronald Foundation. Do you think, and I know you're not the first, but do you think that that position should get paid that much money as, as a nonprofit? Look, I, I think that the, the salaries of nonprofits, you know, and I think the Ronald Foundation, um, does an analysis of that to be sure that it's consistent with other CEOs of community foundations with that size endowment. So I, I you know, I think that that is what they look at when they set salaries, and I think it's appropriate for people who have important positions of responsibility to be compensated, and they're in the range of the, of other community foundations, which I think is the way they make that determination. Uh, you brought this up before, the, the landscape of the House right now, and that it's under Republican control. So that was a factor in your decision that maybe you thought that we're not going to get a whole lot done here going forward? Well, I mean, it, what was the, the real factor for me was having studied the work of the Round Foundation, that I'm certain that this is a place, as the president and CEO, where I can have the most direct and consequential impact on Rhode Island, um, particularly in the moment we're in. I think we've seen in the early days of this new Republican majority, it's, I think, going to be difficult to get anything done. I'm really proud that in the last Congress we got so much done from you know, responding to the pandemic with the American Rescue Plan and making sure we can compete with CHIPS manufacturing, with the CHIPS Act, the biggest infrastructure bill in modern history, um, you know, a number of other really consequential bills that have made such a difference in Rhode Island. So I'm really pleased about that, and I think this next couple of years there's going to be a lot of implementation around those pieces of legislation. I do think it's going to be a challenging time to get things done in the House. And look, I've always wanted to be in a place where I could make the biggest difference. I've never been afraid of a fight, obviously, but um, there's no question that having looked at the work of the Ronald Foundation, that I was particularly excited about working in a place where I knew I could make a difference and get things done. And I think it's going to be especially challenging in Washington to get things done right now. And you just alluded to this. You said you're not afraid of a fight. But would people look at this as saying, like, it's not the best circumstances for Democrats right now in the House, and you kind of found a better opportunity? What, what would you say to that? No, I mean, I think, look, uh, I think it's, you know, when I first got elected, I was in the minority, and we were in the minority for eight years. I found a way to make a difference and work hard uh, to get things done. There's no question that I got a lot more done when we were in the majority, and I think those were the priorities of Rhode Island and the American people, and a lot to be proud of. Um, but this is really about less about what's happening in Washington and more about the opportunity of leading the Rhode Island Foundation, which, as I said, is a very important organization in Rhode Island, one of the largest and oldest community foundations in the country. But if you look at the investments the Rhode Island Foundation has made and the difference they're making in all of the areas that matter to Rhode Island and matter to me, it's, it's really about an opportunity to leverage all that I've done to do even more for Rhode Island as the president and CEO. I'll, I'll assume the answer will be somewhat similar to this question. If you had been in a leadership position, I know you ran for, briefly announced for a leadership position at the end of last year, uh, then you backed out. Was your potential future within the Democratic leadership in the House also a factor in that maybe if you had been uh, in a leadership position, you would have been more No, I, I'm stay. actually a member of the Democratic House yeah. leadership right now. Um, and, you know, Hakeem Jeffries is one of my closest friends, and I've enjoyed being in the Democratic House leadership. Uh, but again, it gets back to really the same point of, you know, every job I've ever had, I put 100% of my energy into it, my whole heart and soul to be the best I can be. And knowing that this was a place at the foundation where I know that that energy will produce real results for Rhode Island is the reason, not kind of the house politics or the change in leadership, but just an opportunity uh, to lead an organization that's making a real difference in the lives of Rhode Island and that I will have the opportunity to not only lead, but to really take to the next level, uh, grow the foundation, grow its impact, grow its work, and you know, get even more done for Rhode Island. What do you see uh, in, in that aspect? When you say to grow, what do you think can be done there? Uh, what potential do you think there well, is? Well, I mean, I think, look, uh, you know, one of the things I'm going to do uh, when I 
assume that role is to do, an, you know, is working with the board to do an assessment about the current strategic plan and whether there are other areas of focus that the foundation should be a part of. Um, and, you know, look at the organization to be sure that we are staffed in a way to get this work done effectively. So there's a lot, I have a lot to learn before I'm going to make some proclamations about what we're going to do differently. But I do know it's a, an organization that has a tremendous amount of resources that's a trusted, um, you know, uh, honest broker on a number of really thorny issues. And I think that's going to be a very important role going forward. So I think there are, the possibilities for the foundation are really limitless. And uh, I'm really excited about it. I'll put the cart before the horse. You haven't even started this job yet. Would you rule out a return to politics at some point if a Senate seat opened, if something else is, or is this a fin kind of finality to it in terms of your political career? Uh, look, my plan is to devote all my energy to this new job and not focus on anything else. Um, and, you know, I expect that I'll be in this job hopefully for a good long time and do a great job and bring uh, a lot of, you know, important uh, impact to Rhode Island uh, I'm you know so I don't have any intention to run for anything else um, and I you'll see me in the same way I devoted all of my energy to being mayor and being a member of Congress and being in the state legislature and being a lawyer I'm going to put the same level of commitment and energy to being the best president and CEO the Rhode Island Foundation has ever had